High Grade Blue Frame Second L. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert 184, 2Rs, 2Bs, GundamReviews.net, continuing my look at the unexpected, but happy to be here, High Grade Gundam Astray Blue Frame Second L, guy's most famous suit in its most famous configuration. Let's see what the empty plates are going to be resulting in. Besides a lot of fun putting it together outside of the monotony of putting on all of those seals, you can see the main body parts there. You're also going to be getting a stand, which is going to be holding up that BFS, and you've got some extra decals there and manipulators if you want to use them. The legs are going to be one of the best part of the frame kits here, just because of the complexity that goes into their pseudo inner outer frame there, which ultimately is going to be looking great, which is one of the most important criteria. From the front here, you can see that he's going to have big white knees there just dominating, but he's also going to have this little touch here of the orange, which is going to be holding on the knives. Actually, a couple pieces there to hold the sheath, and then you can pull that out there, and if you wanted to paint it up silver, I'm sure it would look a lot better. But a lot more interest is just going to be how much blue we get down there. You can see it nicely in the front, on the sides, little parts protruding there around the ankles, with some lining opportunities and some nice-looking thrusters. To go along with a solid black there under the blue boot, the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is that the knee here, you know, occasionally it's going to want to move very smoothly, and at the same time it's always going to look good. You're getting a very nice, almost 180 there. But if you take a look on the back there, you can see that this white part is going to have just a little bit of trouble folding under, so you're going to have to put some pressure there unless it's neatly applied. So slightly problematic, but nonetheless, high grade's moving like that. But it seems like the kind of thing we'd see more often in real grade than here in high grade. Still happy to have it, if you can get it to work consistently. And down at the bottom, you're also going to have this little plus here, painted up in silver, and you'd see a lot more of this boot blade as it comes forward. But all you have to do is just pop it off here, and then you can actually go and put it back in when you don't want to kick somebody beside you on the bus. The waist section is looking good, as it should, and it's almost all white colors there to complement the top of the legs. But you still are going to have that all-important blue coloring there, as you get to see it on the left and right. Couple lining opportunities here, and the side skirts are going to be very unique in terms of their shape here. And uh, they're going to be a little bit problematic. It seems like they can fall out relatively easily. On the back, you're also going to have this nice black attachment, and if you want to go Gatling style, you can take these off, uh, either one, and they're going to look really good and add a whole bunch of width and just overall size and impact when you actually put them together in MS mode. But continuing the near real gradization here of the high grade line, at least not in terms of the inner frame, but in terms of the color details there, check that out the way you're going to get the blue there and for the chest vents, lots of blue parts there. The only disappointing part is that these are actually going to be seals, but the shoulders are going to move nicely. You can see that they'll move up and down slightly, a pretty good move going up there and forward and back. You'll see that it's not going to have a huge range of movement, but not bad. For the actual waist itself, it's going to be moving here as it's on a double poly joint or poly cap there, but it doesn't seem like it wants to move all that much, but it will stay once it's there. But the frames themselves have to be able to put all sorts of cool modified weapons on their back, and that's going to be helped by this large blue part, which is going to hold it when it's attached on. And you're also going to have these two blue pieces on here, which are going to be sitting there at pretty cool angles. You can see a lot more of the aptly named frame there on the back. But from the front, it's all looking good here, and that black is a nice complement to the colors. But on to the main color here. How about that orange if you're out hunting or you want to go and stop traffic? For me, it's just a fantastic choice here, and it really adds to the blue and white, and the kind of thing that you really want to see on the blue frame, despite the blue being the main part of its name. You can see here when you put the shoulders together, it's somewhat disappointing. Look at these seals that are going to be going around here. You've got them bent all over the place here. Just put them on yesterday and you can see that they're already going to be peeling up in key places. Definitely a place where painters would want to go and do that up properly. And you're also going to have this big blue seal here, which is going to seal up the crack when you actually put together the pieces there for the shoulders. So that's a bit of a plus, but you can just see this over-reliance down here. I wonder how it would look off whether you just see too much white considering that the bicep should be blue there. Nonetheless, it's going to look ugly and even worse over time. You've also got this blue stripe there, which is looking okay on the top. Problem though is it's going to be folding down. But on the back, this is the kind of thing I didn't really notice about the blue frame until putting this one together. But it's got these neat little blue pieces there, which plug in. And you've got these flaps that can swivel up and down. You may want to switch the left and right one, but if you want to follow the directions, this is the way to go. Down here, you can also have a shield connector if we were talking about something like the red frame. But you've got a lot of blue for the forearm with that neat little white cutout, which is going to be looking good. And for the bend itself, you can see that it's going to come up here and actually bump into the shoulders. So you're not going to get much more than 90 degrees. 
And speaking of the biceps, you've also got two seals here. These ones are going to be fitting on relatively well as they're going to be sitting on three flat surfaces as opposed to these ones which are bending around all over the place. And then down to the hands for the manipulators where they're never going to have the right knuckles for the perfect grade. Nonetheless, they're still looking okay. For the stand, it's going to be a couple simple pieces there. You can see a bit of an angle when you actually go and put this in. It's going to be holding it all right, but it's not going to feel all that safe unless you've got it at just the right angle, and especially if you want to attach it in the hand. But spiraling into the camera, just when Lo needs it most at the end of the Astray comic, how about this for the absolute monster sword here? It's just looking fantastic in this tactical arms. And you can see that it's going to be helped by the fact it's got stickers here. No real complaints. It would have been nice if we had actually put in orange plastic. But nonetheless, the seals are going to be sitting flat. They're not going to be peeling up. So I don't find them to be very problematic there. You can also see some orange ones there and there. And actually, if you want to talk problematic, again, you've got these white ones. They're going to be two, one on either side. But the way they come up and try to cover up these triangular areas, it's the kind of thing where you may be better off not putting them on at all. But it is going to be helped by the fact that you've got some nice solid white pieces here to hold everything together. And you can see that you've also got this rotating handle down here. As everything can pop out here and rotate around, it's looking good. And remember that it's got more forms. Especially if you want to go flight form here, which is going to be a lot of fun as you get to pop these out down below. You can see the way these parts... The tabs are going to be offset, which is going to allow them to go in there very nicely together. You can bend this out of the way and get that in there with a nice satisfying click. So this is going to add a lot of bulk and wingspan to Gundam Seed, which is of course well known for this. But the blue frame, it's the kind of thing where you don't necessarily notice it until you put it into action. You can also take these parts out and rotate them around so that you're going to be adding on this when you plug it into the back. And if you want to go Gatling form here, you can take these parts and all you have to do with them is twist it down like this. And like this, of course, that's going to be bringing forward a very cool looking Gatling gun, which is going to have some four nice barrels down there. You can almost have this doing some silly walks if you wanted to do it John Cleese style. And then you can take this part and plug it in here. And then you're going to have the option on the back of the actual hips of plugging these formerly hip mounted parts in you can put one on the top and then one down here on the bottom and that's going to take an already large piece of plastic putting this together was many many plates it felt like two total plates just for a weapon which is great you can see it filled out even more and the kind of thing that you don't want to meet unless perhaps you're the 08 ms team and finally one of the most important part about the frame suits is just the way their heads look and i think the blue frame is going to be doing it almost perfect here. I went with some black ink there for under the chin strap, not too crazy about that, but the fact it's got the yellow goatee in there, no need for seals is good. And on the side here, you are going to have two orange seals. Those front ones there are going to be very slippery, they're going to be sliding around all over the place. But the overall construction here is you actually go and pinch this. It's actually really easy to detach the top of the head here, but the way you're going to be putting the white, then the blue, then the white there with the green seal, yes this one's bent, but it's sitting at just the right angle. Overall, I think they nailed the look, and I can only not wait to see it topped once we get the gold frame Amatsu. So a lot of fun putting it together, especially when you count how many actual parts are going to be making up the tactical arms there. The legs are an absolute treat with that frame down there. It's not real great quality, but nonetheless, the looks are almost there. The little touches like the orange down there on the thighs and up on the shoulder are going to be a big plus. Way too many seals though, however, when you actually put together the arms. But the chest and the waist section are looking good, and the tactical arms. All three forms there, don't mind the seals whatsoever. Let's see how it's going to be working though with the actual stand, and how well he'll be able to hold it up. So stick around to see the MS, and of course, please let me know what you think of this part with the comments down below. Thanks for watching everybody, see ya! How many more frames do we need before we have the whole lantern core? Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, two R's, two B's.